Thank you everybody for joining us today. My name is Dawn Parker and I'm the UK Product Ambassador for Milner Brown. Um, I'm going to be presenting today on SAP's plans for assisting with uh, compliance in GDPR. Um, so most people I think are aware that so, uh, we have an upcoming new version of GDPR which is the EU General Data Protection Regulations legislation. Um, and I'm going to update you on how SAP Business One can assist you in becoming compliant. So I'm, to do this, I'm going to start by looking at some of the key principles. There is one important thing that I do need to say also, and that is that neither Milner Brown nor SAP can give you legal advice nor take responsibility for your GDPR compliance. So it's important as data controllers and or processes for your own systems that you look at the data you hold to determine what's relevant and take the necessary steps for compliance. Okay, so firstly, individuals covered by the legislation have the right to be forgotten. This means that they must be able to have their personal data erased on request. So let's look at an example. Say you have an employee in your company who leaves and wants their HR data erasing from SAP. The relevant person with authorised access to the HR data in SAP can go to the record in question and where possible blank out any data categorised as sensitive. That might include home address, marital status, passport details, etc. In other words, any data that can identify the individual. The record can then be flagged as inactive. Another example might be the contact person for a customer who is no longer employed by them. They might have provided a personal mobile number for you to use and now want it removing. The owner of the customer data in SAP can go into the record, remove the personal mobile number and set the contact person to inactive. The next principle is logging changes to personal data. An example of this might be in relation to marketing preferences. We are all familiar with being asked to opt in to receive information from companies who supply us. Your customers and contacts are no exception. When a customer or contact tells you they want to opt out of marketing altogether or only receive it in a certain form, the owner of the customer data can update the customer or contact person record to untick the relevant boxes. That way, you won't inadvertently send them information that could result in a fine for you. In the next version of SAP, the change log will be enhanced to ensure personal data-related fields and objects are tracked. The next principle is logging read access to sensitive personal data. It is always good practice to ensure that general authorizations are set correctly for all users of your system. I have seen occasions where, for speed, all users have been set as super users or given full authorizations. Now, because of GDPR, there is an added incentive to make sure that users are only given access to the data they need to do their jobs. If this includes seeing sensitive personal data, then they need to be aware of their responsibilities. Going forward in SAP, there will be a special log to check who has been accessing certain predefined sensitive personal data. This will allow the data controller to review access against rights and make any necessary corrections. The last key principle I'm going to look at today is being able to provide details of the personal information to the individual if they ask for it. Let's look, for example, at a customer who you provide an on-site support service to. You probably hold information about the contact details of the key holders so that your engineer can get access in an emergency. If the customer asks you for details of the information you hold about their staff, you need to be able to supply it in the timescale laid down in the regulations. In a future release of SAP, you will be able to get a report which lists records of the personal data requested in a form that can be sent to the customer. So to summarise, let's look at what is available in SAP Business One now that can help you find, protect, control access to and remove personal data if needed. I've listed a few of the tools here. Hopefully they'll be recognisable to you 
Um, if not, um, then it's time to uh, look into the system in a bit more detail and make sure you're aware of those tools and how to use them. For those of you who are running the HANA version of SAP Business One, you also have the added uh, facility of being able to use the enterprise search, which obviously gets you um, to all data in the system very, very quickly. You can also see here from the notation at the bottom that some of the enhancements around data ownership are only available from 9.3 patch zero. Going forward, SAP will be enhancing the product further. So coming up in 9.3 patches three and four, there will be new data privacy tools and an enhanced change log. There will be a centralized place to categorize what constitutes personal data. User-defined fields can be included in this. The wizard will provide reporting, erasure and encryption facilities for sensitive personal data. There will be a special log to check who has been accessing certain predefined sensitive personal data. And personal data related fields and objects will be tracked in the enhanced change log. I'm sure you're all now wondering when you can get hold of SAP Business One 9.3. Well, it's already available for early adopters. Uh, we are at patch level two currently. SAP does also provide us with a schedule for upcoming patches. I've listed the date here for patch level three, but be aware that the release dates are subject to change. To find out more, keep an eye out for our newsletters, check on the website, contact your account manager or speak to support. Better still, why not start planning for your upgrade now? As you heard earlier, as well as support for GDPR, there are lots of great new features in 9.3. We will be looking at some of them in more detail in our next webinar in two weeks' time. Okay, so um, in terms of what I wanted to say uh, today about Business One and GDPR, um, that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for everybody who's attended today. I hope you found it of interest. Um, enjoy the rest of your day and we look forward to seeing you in two weeks' time for our webinar on 9.3. Thank you.